And we're back with oxygen, the eighth element. I, in fact, I already narrated this, but I lost it on purpose because I hated it. <laughs> I'm going to try and do a better job starting now. Okay, so the that image is blurred because I didn't paint these in order. Fluorine was already done and I was matching the edges and I wanted to hide fluorine from you so that it could be a surprise later. Oxygen is, I think of him as the most social element. Saw him as, as this big, round, jolly, not exactly Santa, but you know what I'm going for. Uh, it bonds with everything, pretty much. I'm exaggerating for comedic effect, but yes, um, oxygen forms bonds with itself when it can't find any other element to bond with. In O2, we're all familiar with. O3 is what ozone is. Um, oxygen bonds with hydrogen, obviously, and that's what water is. I've been wanting, when I get all these things when I get all these paintings done, I would like so much to go in and do groupings, like oxygen with like twin hydrogens, one on either side of him to represent water. And there's so many compounds, it'll be so much fun. But that's, of course, in a hundred years when I have this done. I'm having so much fun personifying the, the characteristics of each of these and I have so many choices too. I have so many options. I gotta tell you, I can, I can pull in from the history, how things were discovered, how they're distilled. I can pull in from where they show up in fiction, and of course, I can, largely, what I'm doing is drawing from their their chemical nature and how they're used in in industry or in science. It's very abundant. It's like the third most abundant element in the universe. It's like half of the weight of the earth is oxygen. Part of the goal with each of these pieces of art was to not fill the frame, not go edge to edge, because when we edit them into cards, they're going to have these little bounding boxes. And, and if you match them edge to edge, with the other cards, then they will all flow into each other. So you, it was like the textures had to flow nicely. That's why you keep seeing me butt them up against each other and, and make sure they flow. But, um, but I can't be having someone's tightrope or tree stump or something extending into one of the others. If I were a better artist, I could make it morph into something that would be useful for that card, and then it would be just this hundred times cooler. But I'm just me, and I am doing the utmost of what I'm capable of. And I'll try to get these videos out more regularly. I think we should aim for, I don't know, Mondays. Let's aim for Monday. He is by far the fattest of the elements I've painted so far. And that's okay. This project, I love it. I can't even tell you how much. I love it enough to sit in this coat closet and narrate the same 10 minute video twice. <laughs> and I keep expecting it to get old. I keep expecting to get tired of it. I've always been the kind of person who had to have five or six projects going at once so that if I got bored or antsy with one, I, I could move on to one of the others and then I wasn't just twiddling my thumbs. And I had another five projects ready at the beginning of the year to do alongside this and every single one of them is just collecting dust because I can't stop being inspired. Every one of these paintings is so much fun, you guys. I gotta tell you. 
each one has all these challenges. I keep learning. My brain's getting bigger. For example, I know that our atmosphere is 22% oxygen. I learned about how much liquid oxygen was being used to propel rockets. Not as the fuel, but as the oxidizer for fuel. I wanted to keep the image simple, though less to do with the technology, more to do with the natural processes. His beard is clouds. He'll have a glass of water in one hand. When I did the sketch for this, I did not know what I wanted him to be sitting on, so I just sort of, I wanted it to be symbolic. Something, a rocket engine maybe, because because liquid oxygen is what rockets need. And uh, what I ended up going with, which is much simpler and to the point, is this tree. It looks like a bonsai, but I like it. It's pretty cute. I saw him having flame dreads in my head, and that never really gelled, so don't get too attached to what's on his head right now. It looks cool from here, but in person it was kinda lame. I gotta tell you guys, I'm recording in the closet, and my foot has fallen asleep so hard. <laughs> if my voice sounds strained, that's why. He's at the top of a column of elements called the calcigens, and I decided that that column would be represented by satyrs, or fawns, goat-legged people. I did try to keep things in common in the columnular fashion, so that if someone was trying to put these together like a puzzle later, it would be fairly self-explanatory what belongs where. I don't think I achieved that entirely. I'm only halfway done. Spoilers, I'm on the 8th video. I'm on the 64th painting. It's fairly obvious which of these processes is the one that, that comes most naturally to me. And we shall persevere. And if you think that there's not going to be 118 videos at the end of this, you do not know how good I am at persevering. Oh, oxygen is a gas, and with all the gases, I get to choose what kind of butterfly wings I'm using. And the arctic blue fit oxygen really well, because they're blue, liquid oxygen is blue, that's a built-in mnemonic, but they're also very ubiquitous, and hard to kill, and cheerful, and social. And I thought all of that was just perfect. I've learned a lot while I was painting. I think I've probably become a better painter. At the end of the project, if I go back to hydrogen and go, oh, no, 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 and try to do it again, just, just somebody come slap me, because there has to be a limit to that. The cards will come with a book, which I don't know if I've mentioned. Um, pretend I haven't, because I'm about to tell you about it. The book will have, on, on the left-hand pages, will have the science, the atomic weight, when it was discovered, what it was named for, and then a few key things about how it behaves chemically. And on the right-hand side will be a lot more intuitive write-ups about how you would read it as a card if this was, if you were using it as a, as an oracle deck, like a tarot. And um, those more intuitive pieces of writing are ones that I'm already working on. And I'm posting them once a week, at least, in my, um, in my Patreon. So if you want to become a patron, I am Bite the Paintbrush over there and um, throw some money that way. And you can preview the booklet long before anybody else gets to see it. Oh, and here we have me deciding against the flame dreads and going with cumulonimbus cloud hair instead. 
It's a little more Santa Claus-like, and it's a little misleading because he's not one of the elements ancient people knew about, so he's not old. I tried to make sure his face was youthful and not terribly wrinkled or anything, just to make it clear that just because his hair and beard are made of clouds doesn't mean he's an old man. Oxygen wasn't recognized as an element until a date I will put on the screen right now. Anyway, this has been fun. Again. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next Monday with Florine. Like, subscribe, comment, and stay healthy. <laughs>